Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Uplifting Interviews with Total Strangers. Now, I don't know, are we total strangers? We've been talking for over <laughs> an hour and a half. We were, think, yeah, yeah, we were strangers, but no more. <laughs> uh, 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 how long has it been, like an hour and a half? I think it's been an hour and a half, yeah. An hour and a half, and we still have you know an hour little, to go. A little ways to go. <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> and we're going to do things a little differently today. Today, you're going to tell me what you learned so far in the last hour and a half Talking to Dr. Fantastic. Well, I've learned a lot. Uh, first, I think... We won't talk about the negative stuff, about the, the, the extinction level event. We're only going to talk about positive oh, Well, as you mentioned, a positive thing. But <laughs> okay, I think, you know, right off the bat, I mean, the uh, the power of uh, motivating yourself, I think, is how I would describe it. And the ability of uh, yourself to determine your attitude and your energy and your outcome based on your, your, uh, your internal... Uh, you know, mood that you set, basically. I mean, your your willingness and, and uh, focus to be happy and to be uh, energetic and to be, you know, optimistic. Uh, and that you really control that destiny. You control all those things. Yes, you do. I think that was the most important thing that we talked about and that you uh, mentioned to me. And I saw it from the second I met you when I saw the Be Fantastic uh, with two thumbs up in the in the <laughs> trunk. <laughs> <laughs> what did you? What was your impression when you saw that? I smiled. I, you know, smiled. I said, "This is going to be good." Good. <laughs> I wasn't. I was not. You know, I only got halfway on my trip when I flew across country. I had to do another whatever, and that part of it I wasn't looking forward to. But I'm glad it turned out so well. <laughs> you know, life is a series of left right turns, as I told you, and, and you got to look at the positive of everything that happens. You know, you missed a flight. Well, what positive ha- happened from that? You know. But so now, how are you this morning? Oh, okay, great. I'm a little tired. Yeah, I slept on the plane a little bit, but uh, been great. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> I'm going, oh my God, an hour and a half. I'm so embarrassed. Ladies and gentlemen, some people don't get it right away. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but you I'm sleep deprived. Mike, you know, here, here's what it is we're creatures of habit. Yeah. And you've been saying good your whole life probably yeah. and you just said great because you are feeling great but it's you know again it's a rhetorical question yeah and it, it's you when you someone from now on because today is the first day of the rest of your life they're going to say how are you you're going to have to put a little check in there and think for a second because you know your parents always said think before you speak yes exactly we don't do that <laughs> especially when you say how are you you say good every time how are you so you're going to have to think okay i need to say i'm fantastic now you know what's happening with me is Everybody knows I'm fantastic now, so I don't get asked it that often anymore. <laughs> they know that I'm going to say I'm fantastic. So they, they, say, oh, you're, they don't have to bother everything's too with good. that formality <laughs> anymore, right? Your energy is too good. We don't want to know how you're doing. Well, that's not that they don't want to know. They know. They know I'm going to say I'm fantastic. Yeah, right. I have to. I'm Dr. Fantastic. <laughs> so uh, let's start again. How are you? I'm fantastic. fantastic. I would say the other thing we talked about, but we can't put No, I say that on the air all the time. <laughs> You can say that. No, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll, it was good. I'll, I'll radio edit myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's fan freaking, freaking tastic. Fan freaking tastic. Fan yeah. freaking tastic. <laughs> I tell the English people say, I'm, fi- I'm fan bloody tastic. There you go. Is there bloody? Fan there, bloody tastic. Yeah. Fan bloody tastic is a good one. It's funny how culture in those words because I we had no problem saying bloody, but you know. Yeah. So what else did you learn uh, about being fantastic? Tell me all. Uh, see if you can remember how many of the benefits you get from. Um, oh well, the benefits, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, and I think it's right. I mean, you just, I mean, the, the, like people, like the more you uh, laugh and smile, I mean, you have higher endorphins, you have higher happy, you know, higher happy mood. You spread that mood and and those uh, endorphin releases to other people. Uh, certainly, when you're feeling like that and you have that relationship, and added on top of that relationships, you know, you enhance your um, life span. You enhance your um, emotional, you know, situation, which helps with your, your health and everything as well. Um, and, you know, I think you see study after study that suggests people that are happy and that have relation relationships, not just, you know, personal, intimate relationships, but relationships with their community and whatever, they have more fulfilling and longer lives. Yes. You're kidding. Me. How about in business? What, how, what, what do you see the benefits of being fantastic in business? Well, I mean business or any profession really right I mean uh, I was mentioning to you I work in state government and you, you see a lot of people in politics and, and that is the same kind of thing is that if you have that energy the positive energy people are um, attracted to you 
uh, people want to do business with you. They want to support you, whatever it is that you're doing. So I think, uh, you know, there's a big benefit there on a professional side as well. Now, um, I, I've had over 550 interviews on uplifting interviews with this total strangers. It's the best strangers. so far, though. It's the best so far of yours. <laughs> of course it is. You're the first politician. Oh, wow. Well, I wouldn't say I'm a politician. Oh, you weren't saying you're a politician? Well, I work in state government. I, you know, politician is also a negative word. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, politics to me is a negative word, not politician. Yeah. Uh, religion is a negative word to me because no one knows what's going on in religion and no one knows what's going on in politics. No one's going to agree on any of those things. Not everyone is going to yeah, agree. Yeah, that's right. Different gods, different politics, different political philosophies. stances, yeah. philosophies. But you can't argue with being positive. That's right. Yeah. And by the way, anybody, if there's it, anyone out there the that doesn't agree with being positive, I want to hear from you. Yeah. Because um, I'm on a search for the, the the most negative person on the planet. And how that how's that going for you? Right? How's that going for you? How's Probably negativity going well. for you? I don't think so. Now, if you uh, when you smile, as I told you earlier, you get the dorphins, the dopamine, and the serotonin. Yeah. Now right. the serotonin. Uh, it's been proven that if you don't get enough of that, it will lead to clinical depression. Uh, so imagine someone who's clinically depressed, they're not smiling, and it's continuing the cycle. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they and say even if you just physically push yourself into a smile, it releases um, those endorphins fats, fats, and serotonin. I don't dis- disagree with that. And you think about, we talked about energy or whatever, you, like, you give out positive energy, but you can also give out negative energy too, right? that you have yeah. with the people that you know you spend your day with. And uh, I tell people to get rid of any negative thoughts. If they're a cancer, get rid of any negative people in your life, they're a cancer. Yeah, right. Get rid of negativity. I mean it's it is so important though, right? The people that you surround yourself with, whether professionally oh, yeah. or personally of course. or whatever. Of course. Uh, almost the most important key probably to happiness. It is. I mean at the end of the day, when you run out of money, you don't your friends leave you. <laughs> yeah, I told you about that. <laughs> and you know who your friends are. I mean, how can you have more than a, a hand, a couple handfuls of friends? Yeah, they take time. You got to talk to them all the time. You, you know, you can't have that many friends. No, I think it's like you know, it's funny because when you're at, at least my experience was when you were younger, it was easier a to have friends and to make friends. Right, you were coming across new people for more frequently something I don't know and as adults you sort of get into the same routine or whatever and you don't and people seem to be close you know they seem to close off themselves to new friendships as well yeah um, because you um, typically you're getting money and you don't know who to trust yeah right it's a trust factor I go to a, 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 a billionaire's um, Christmas party and he invites 2,000 of his closest friends <laughs> come on they all love him by the way you know and he knows them all because you don't get into that party unless you know them. Yeah, right. You know? And it's a great party, but I mean, and I've experienced it on a little lower level by having the yacht, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, I had lots of friends on that yacht. I'd have 70 people on that yacht uh, for parties. Oh, I can imagine. Comfortably. So, but I think you're right. I mean, the number of friends, I mean, it, it does take, friendships take nurturing, right? I mean, you have to stay in contact. You now, have to be there for them. And these uplifting interviews are about spreading knowledge and information. Now, if you, I don't know how many people have been listening to my show, but you know it's nothing fancy. It's no glitz and glamour and, and music. It's just people talking, <laughs> real conversations. Um, now, one of the things about relationships, and people uh, or get divorced every single day, right? Especially the celebrities. They don't realize it's work to have yeah. a relationship. And it's 24-7 work. Yeah. Whereas your job, you could do it in your sleep. You could do it hungover. <laughs> right? Right? You can do it without even thinking. That's right. It's because it's 8 to 10 hours a day, whatever it is. So, but while you're doing the, what makes you money, you still have your relationship. <laughs> He's, he or she's calling you, and it's, it's like you got to deal with that. The, you know, the back you got to deal with the kids. Right? You know, it's, it's a 24-7, 365 job. Yeah, yeah. And it takes work, and people don't want to put the work in. So they get divorced. Because they want the the passion, they want the you know the lust and all the great things that are all the, all the beginning, the, yeah, the, the beginning things. of a relationship. You know all the the tantalizing stuff. You know, but uh, after I've been married 38 years, you know, it's, it's it's not the same relationship. You know. Yeah, actually, that's a fascinating point. I wonder what how has your relationship evolved evolved over time? I mean, if, 
Do you think of it as my wife still hates me? <laughs> oh yeah, what were the five things that you drive? <laughs> okay, yeah. I drive five things, ladies and gentlemen. I drive Uber. I drive. And I love it. I drive Lyft, and I love it. And I drive limos, and I love that. I drive limo buses with thirty <laughs> drunk people in them. I love that. I love to see people have fun. And then limos, everyone's having fun. Oh, yeah. And I drive yachts, and I love to see the, the yacht parties, and, the, and I love driving yachts. And I drive my wife crazy. <laughs> I drive five things, ladies and gentlemen. Which one do you drive the best? My wife crazy. <laughs> she is, she's one miserable girl. But she says she's going to go to heaven, and she doesn't have to go through any gates or anything. Directly to heaven by putting up with me for 38 years. <laughs> well, fast pass, easy pass. So you you work in government, but you're not in politics. Yeah. So I mean, you know, tell us a, about how that works. <laughs> how does that so work? So we're definitely in, in politics and government. I just like I think of politicians, uh, as I mentioned, sometimes have a negative. Sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> Go, say that again. Sometimes, you know, like I mentioned, politicians or politics have a negative connotation. I think, you know, I'm not elected. I'm appointed by the governor of Vermont, and do um, so you know him? Yeah. Yeah. So we work. So we work closely as a cabinet and. But I think of myself as like working for as a public servant more than a politician, right? Okay. So uh, I think that's an important distinction. So you're going to La Quinta. By the way, we're all going to La Quinta here. Um, it's a gorgeous resort. Uh, what are you going to accomplish there? That's a good question. So we have a meeting at National Association of Insurance Commissioners from across the oh. country coming to La Quinta, and uh, it's today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then some of Monday. And uh, basically, it's an opportunity for the commissioners in all the states to get together, to network, to talk about issues in their respective jurisdictions, to talk about issues that we're all dealing with nationally, and develop policy and develop positions and things like that. So really there's, you know, the networking piece is important because you need to know who your colleagues are across right. the country, but uh, also policy development and formation is important as well. So you, are you, would you say you're an expert in, in insurance? Uh, I I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I am very intimate with insurance. Yeah. Okay, because I got something to tell you about right. insurance. You know, I can talk on any subject. <laughs> <laughs> and insurance, I met a, gen a gentleman who came up with a, uh, a company, and I think he's still trying to launch it. It's called FIIC, Federal Investor Insurance Corporation. Now, in insurance, you can invest, you can insure your life, your property, your home, you can things, almost anything. Or, almost anything. You've never been able to insure an investment. Right. Now, what they did was they took all the businesses from the 30s and put them um, into a computer and um, came out with an algorithm that shows how a business can be successful. So they're really pretty much an expert on uh, if you have a business plan. Now, typically, if you have a good business plan and you follow the business plan, which is the first mistake most people don't yeah, do, right. they don't follow it, you're, you're going to be successful. There will be changes. As yeah, you, you go through adopt, your business, you have to yeah. adapt. So you have to have the expertise behind you to, to, to navigate. What happens a lot is they'll buy a, they get the money and they buy a Porsche instead of buying you know the, the, the new computer or whatever, right? <laughs> so that's the first mistake. The second mistake is they don't usually ask for enough money. Yeah, right. So before you, they will issue you an insurance policy based on your business plan. They're going to make sure it's solid and. And you're gonna if you do get the uh, the policy, which will be AAA rated, Lloyd's of London, you're gonna have to adhere to it, which means being audited uh, by yeah, a right. company, all the requirements, and following the plan. Yeah. And if you don't do that, they step in and take over oh, yeah. and have their experts come in and run the business because they obviously feel that there's not gonna be a claim if they gave you the policy. Yeah, right. So now you take that policy, say it's a million dollars, you go to an investor, and say, listen, I have a million dollar policy that your million dollar investment's covered, hundred percent. By Lloyd's of London, the investors gonna invest. Oh yeah, that's a great. I mean, I think there's a lot of value. I mean, you say what was it called? The FI. FIIC. It's called, it's called it Federal Investor Insurance Corporation. So I mean, similar to like FDIC, right? Federal yeah. Depository Insurance. Yeah. A corporation for banks, but but they have the uh, and they have experts in every field that um, will step in and take over the business if you don't follow your policy. You break your policy, you, you lose your insurance policy. Yeah. They, they don't want to have any claims. Quite literally, if, if, if they pull this off, they never will have a claim. Yeah, right. Because they take over the company and they run it right. <laughs> they run it right. But, you, but a lot of people don't ask. They, they, you go to the well once. You don't. You can't keep going to the well. Yeah, right. you got to ask for enough money. And a lot, a lot of times I've seen in, in, in the many businesses I've been involved with, 
you open up a restaurant, right? You spend a lot of money in remodeling and licenses oh, yeah. and the leases, and then you don't have enough money to put aside for six months to a year yeah. to build the business up. Yeah, right. And you go out of business right away because they didn't have the cash flow to keep them in business with no business. And I would think, I mean, you know, and you're getting, you're opening your doors in a restaurant. How important is it to have really trained and hospitable staff, right? And be able to pay them appropriately. Yeah. And that's something probably you don't think about in terms of And that's why they did this algorithm and they know what makes business, almost every business successful. No, it's, I mean, very promising. Uh, so it would be targeted to small new businesses. Yeah, it could be any size. And it seems like something some people would be interested in investing in as well. So I mean, I think they should have um, mini loans. You know, like there's just so many businesses I know. People come to me all the time looking for money. Yeah. Um, and I, I try to guide them, and usually I have someone in every industry I can connect them with because I know I've been in so many industries. You know? <laughs> um, That's a benefit. And there's a one girl right now. She's got a great, like you know, go to meeting. Yeah, of course. She has something better than go to meeting. And she's only looking for 10 founders at 10,000. And she's going to double their money every year. Um, and it's a, it's already up and running. And you can, you, I can send it to you if you're interested in looking at it. And basically, it's, um, it, there's no download. You know, it's cheaper. And I don't know if you know how much money is involved in these meetings. Uh, I can imagine a lot. Millions. I mean, it's such a huge business. The, you know, because... Where 50 people or whatever it is, 100 people come across the country to a physical meeting this weekend. Right. But that is not, I mean, that is the yeah. exception nowadays, right? Exactly. People are investing in technology to, provide, oh, yeah. to connect this people. Is, uh, this is instantaneous. Yeah, right. Right into the meeting. You don't have to put a, um, once you get the email, you click on it and you're in the meeting. You don't have to put a code number and That's blah, great. blah, blah, dial in. And it's great quality. And uh, I think they're onto something. So if you're interested or you know someone might be interested, I can that information. Oh, and if you're interested in everybody, <laughs> call me. 310-913-5533. If you like what you see, by the way, anybody listening for the first time, subscribe, like, share, hit the bell button, hit the thumbs up. And um, again, if you go back into my uh, archives, I've interviewed scientists and rappers and healers. And I mean, it's, it's just the, the caliber of people that I've been honored to meet this it's the last six months it's, it's phenomenal that's great it's phenomenal 500 interviews over 550 interviews wow. on this show and then my podcast by the way anybody who's listening for the first time go to uh, be fantastic today listen to the podcast the podcasts are all about improving your mind your body or the planet and all I talk to is scientists humanitarians leaders of industry and, and, and um, it's amazing it's really uh, that's great Important. It's an important. Uh, and then next week, everybody subscribe because next uh, February 22nd, I'll be at the Conscious Life Expo, interviewing some of the smartest people on the planet. Where's that? That's in LA. It's in LA. It's at the convention, uh, LAX Hilton. Oh yeah, nice. And I'll, I have press pass. I'll be interviewing some really smart folk. <laughs> and I'm just having a time of my life, you know. Here we are. Um, we met in the dark. Now it's light. <laughs> two hours. We've it said the, two hours and 20 minutes. I think it said. Uh, we've seen the way. 220 minutes. Or whatever. La Quinta is a beautiful place. Yeah, I've never been. Um, the whole area though, right? There's Palm Springs, La yeah. Quinta. Yeah. Oh, you've never been out here? Yeah. Oh my God, it's great. It looks beautiful. I mean, the mountains, the yeah. scenery. I mean, everything yeah. is, I mean, the, the um, just even the, you know, look at the, it's like, look at the snow caps. If you have time, there's a tram to the top of that mountain. Oh, really? scare the shit out of you. <laughs> and at the very end, it goes up the face, you know, the, 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 the um, gondola. It's really high. And it's really cold up there, too. Well, look at those. have snow on the top, right? Yeah, there you go. Snow, yeah. That's wild. And we had a storm just yesterday. That's wild. So now you're from Vermont? Yeah, so from Vermont, uh, Green Mountain State, uh, 14th state uh, in the country, right? First state to be uh, brought into the, the United States after the 13 original colonies. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was, for a while, part of many different states around it. I mean, it was part of New York. It was part of uh, Maine. It was part of Massachusetts at various points. So, uh, And for a while, it was its own independent republic, the Republic of Vermont. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, similar wow. to Texas, how it was. It. So then, um, you know, we had to get with the program and join the United States, though. <laughs> so there four distinct seasons. Yeah, very distinct. Actually, there's five. Cause five? There's, yeah, there's, you know, there's um, spring, and then there's summer. And then fall, which is beautiful, winter, but then there's mud season, 
uh, which uh, in Vermont everybody knows there's mud season, which mud is season. the time when the you know the the ground is fine and uh, you know warming up to get into spring. Uh, so winter's leaving us. Spring is coming. The frozen ground is turning into mud, and uh, yeah, it's hard to get around. Mud season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I learned something new every day. Mud season. That's Have you been to New England in the fall? Uh, uh, probably. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. 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 Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a place in the east where there was beautiful leaves. Yeah, exactly. That, sounds like, that sounds like Vermont. It's probably autumn or fall. Yeah. Now, what's the difference between autumn or fall? That's a good question. I don't think there is a difference, is there? I don't know. I thought, it, I thought you were going to say you had spring, summer, autumn, fall, and winter. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think it's two. I think it's different sides of the same coin. I think. Uh, yeah, it's like you say potato, I say potato. Yeah, exactly right. But in New England, we're all excited about the uh, weekend and the Super Bowl, right? Uh, yeah. I, don't, I, I know folks here in LA are excited. Their team is in the Super Bowl. But as there's well. a place called um, Randy's Donuts. It's in Manchester, in LA, uh, in the freeway. Very famous. He's got a 50 foot donut. Top of the building. It's been there for ages. So, oh, okay. You know, like, I thought it was a donut you eat. No, no, no. Foot donut. All right. no. It's a big ass donut, and he painted it yellow and and with blue lettering. Oh, really? For the um, and it's really gorgeous. They did. I mean, kudos to the management uh, to think of that. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's. I mean, whenever someone comes up with a, because I've been in a lot of businesses, yeah, and show business and marketing and commercials and TV and theater and film, and when someone comes up with a great jingle or a great Bad. I go, I can't believe they did that without me. Yeah. <laughs> How did they think of that on their own? God. Yeah, they, <laughs> or why didn't I think of that? Or why did I think yeah. of that? Like, um, like, I've created some really amazing things in my That's life. That's interesting. Too. I mean, the showbiz world that's here in L.A. is so different and interesting than what is, uh, you know, what's going on in the Northeast. Uh, what's, like, the most interesting, like, aspect of that you've been involved with in the show business? Well, I produced Ray Charles on his 50th birthday, wow. my first concert. And in those, I like to tell the story that in those days, um, it was a little easier to do business. Um, in those days, um, and then prior to those days, the, the day when I did Ray Charles, I traveled around the world with, and I had many, many college degrees. Because they didn't have computers back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't check you? They couldn't check me. And I, as long as you, uh, you talk the talk and, and you're able to pull it off the interview. Like, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. That was me. I didn't do anything illegal, but I always did it because whatever job you take, they tell you how to do it their way anyway. Yeah, right. And, as long as, and I'm a jack of all trades, so it was always you good. You can adapt to the job. But uh, I, I called up uh, Ray Charles because uh, John Lester, whose son is, uh, who's the son of Frank Lester, you know, Guys and Dolls and Christian Anderson, Most Happy Fella, Broadway. Um, he taught me how to produce, and I, I wanted to produce Ray in uh, honor of my mother, as that was her favorite entertainer. So I called Ray Charles Enterprises, and I said, I'd like to produce Ray Charles. I'm a producer. I haven't produced yet. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I, I can do anything. So I said, I'd like to produce him on um, a concert. And he said, well, his 50th birthday's coming up. Good timing. I said, I'll call you right back. So I called up the Dorothy, uh, called a few places, got a hold of the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. It's a big place in Los Angeles, big concert hall. And I said, I'm producing Ray Charles on his 50th birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> We'd love to have him here. <laughs> and I pulled it off. My That's first wild. Production. How? I mean, it's interesting that they were so open to, you know, having someone call and, and then... That was the days. That. The yeah. 80s. Um, I uh, created the, the video department at Mammoth Mountain. I used to ski up in those uh, mountains with 100 pounds of equipment and to make people uh, movies in one hour. Oh, wow. Opening, and closing, the weather skiing. And the quality isn't as good as this phone right here. Yeah, I know. And you had hundreds of pounds, Hun right? 140 pound backpack, which was the recorder, VHS. Yeah, right. 40 pound uh, a battery belt, belt and a 20 pound camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd ski backwards and, and do all kind of fun things. Yeah, that was the best job in Mammoth. Everyone applied for that job in Mammoth because it was the best job on the mountain and I got it. Now you that can just cool. have a GoPro or, or a selfie stick. <laughs> this, thing, this, this is great. <laughs> um, so we're going to try 50th birthday, but yeah. how, how many people were like, what was the, what was, was like the good, event sort of? It was a concert. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, out of that concert, a guy, oh, well, I was producing it. I was living in a bomb shelter in downtown LA, by the way, <laughs> with a scientist working for room and board. I was penniless, basically. Guy came to me with a song called World Peace. And he said, Monty, can you have a racing at your concert? 
And I looked at that song and I said, this, is, this song can make history. We're going to do something bigger than that. So I, I created what's called the Foundation for World Harmony. And the plan was to get 20 superstars on one page, on one stage at one time, singing that song in an ensemble, right? For the 20th anniversary, that's why 20 entertainers, yeah. Pavarotti, Michael Jackson, Stones, you know, all kind of people. A real eclectic group of the whole music genre. And um, for the 20th anniversary of the Peace Corps. Oh, nice. And I wrote it into a proposal. So that was what, in the late 80s? Yeah. No, early 80s. Early 80s. Um, oh, I right, wrote right, it into right. a proposal. And um, I, uh, I, I, I e uh, not emailed, I sent it via um, <laughs> certified mail to myself, which is called a poor man's patent. <laughs> we'll talk about patent in a second. Um, the patent system and the broken patent system. I have someone who's reinventing the patent system. Because the current system is you're telling all the billionaires in the world exactly how to steal your plan. Yeah, right. Exactly. To the T. Right? And they time. steal them. Yeah. Everyone's stealing them. And they say, now sue me. <laughs> and but you got to find out where in the world they're doing it. Yeah, right. Sue them. And, you know, you're not going to win. So Jurisdictional the, limitations. The, the patent system's broken. This guy in the Philippines is... is in, investing in a new patent system that not only will give you a 50-year patent instead of a 20, but they stand behind it with their legal team. Right now, there's no one to protect you. You have to protect you go yourself. to court, but you have, you know, it's just the court. This is a legal team that protects your patent, and they have the investors in the um, in the new system will see your patent and can incubate you and invest in you because they like what you're doing. That's great. So the patent system's broken. It's been broken for a long time. Well, it, so yeah. I did the, um, you know, the... Uh, the flip side of that patent situation is companies that, um, you know, have their own trademark or patent, but, you know, other larger corporations claim that they infringe upon their trademark well, patent Well, here's the, here's the trick. You've got to wrap copyrights all around it. Yeah. With this, change this, change that, because they just, just change one little thing. Yeah, exactly. And then they said, well, it's not the same thing. It doesn't change it. Yeah. So you have to really do a lot of... Um, uh, Changes to uh, protect you. So, but it's it's a ridiculous system, you know. So, with the twenty-year concert, that that of the, of the Peace Corps, did that? No, it didn't happen. But it came it came out as "We Are the World." I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, we are the world. There's we are Jackson. the world. Yeah. Yeah. That they took someone stole my idea because what I did was I um, I met this guy. Uh, he was actually a gay guy. Worked for Merv Griffin Productions. I didn't have any money, as I told you. I was living in a bomb shelter. He made reams of copies of the. It was about quarter-inch thick. 20 pages, um, maybe 25, 30 pages. I still have it unopened to this date oh, wow. if, if I have to prove that it was my, We Are the World was my idea. And I gave it out like candy to everybody. No NDAs. Oh, so you would mail it to yourself I, I, and then not open it? Yeah, it's still unopened yeah, to this yeah, day. Yeah. But the, the, the other copies that this guy made for me, because he believed in it, I've been a, a motivator my whole life, you know, motivated him to help the cause. I gave it to celebrities all day long, you know. Here, I got a plan, a, a concert for world peace, you know? That's amazing. And it came out as We Are the World. <laughs> that was a great song. My ideas do work. And, um, and it was, the song was called World Peace. Yeah, it's it was a great song. We are the world no, it's world not the same peace. song, obviously, same but it's concept. a concept. No one had done a concert for charity up to that point. Really? Mine was the first, you know, um, plan. Plus the song was, uh, it's just the concept of the song even. It's That's the thing, like, my concept of getting an ensemble of musicians to sing something for... It makes, it makes a difference, you know. That's interesting. Anyway, I've done a lot of things like that. My wife of 38 years will tell you how many things have been stolen from my my, my planning. But anyway, it's, it is what it is. Well, so my wife cool. keeps saying, "Stop trusting people." <laughs> I go, "One day I'm going to meet someone worth trusting, worth, <laughs> that's trustworthy." Because you can screw me once, and usually I forget that you screwed me. And my wife will say, "You dealing business with him again? He screwed you." Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Well, I think that's a good way to live because you don't want to, it is. you know, it is. get to be held up on petty things. You know, yeah. I think we, we carry too much of that around yeah. with us. Now, these these windmills started out as a tax shelter years when they first came out. Now they are they are a money maker. And but when one breaks, it's not worth it to come out and fix really? it. Really, it's too expensive. Oh, that's wild. So these are broken. The ones that are moving. Yeah. Are What's that? Uh, the terrain over there is like boulders or rocks. Yeah. Like you said, you can go to the top of that mountain. There's a tram. Oh, it's that mountain right there? Yeah. Wow. Over oh, that one. Well, Mike, it's been a real pleasure interviewing <laughs> you. 
Well, what do we got here? Do you see the number? How many uh, minutes have we been 29 there? minutes. 29 minutes. We're closing in on 30. 30 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike, great guy. He's living large. He's going to start living a life a little fuller, hopefully, after meeting Dr. Fantastic. I hope you all listen to my advice. Go back and watch some other uh, interviews. Tune in my to podcast. Like, sh- share, subscribe. But most importantly, be fantastic. You're going to feel better. You're going to make other people feel good. If you know anyone knows Ellen out there, can you have her give me a call? <laughs> I need to get on her show because she says be kind to one another. When you're fantastic and you tell people you're fantastic, you are being kind to people. You're making them smile. You're making them feel good. That's being kind. Let people into traffic, everybody. Open doors. Donate. Volunteer. Love thy neighbor. Love your spouse. Love, love your children. Love yourself. Love yourself. <laughs> everybody, be fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Lester. Add that to it. Well, we're back for just a quick uh, shot of the beautiful La Quinta Hotel and Spa in beautiful uh, Palm Springs, California. Desert Springs, wherever we're at. And established 1926, this place. Look at it, ladies and gentlemen. Mike's going to have some fun. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the mountains. Is it gorgeous, everybody? Mike is going to have a fantastic trip. So how are you, Mike, again? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. We're, we're fantastic. We we're, had a nice ride. We had a great ride. A right? We had ride. a fantastic ride. Look at these beautiful flowers. This is it, man. It's hard to even tell where the uh, entrance is. I think it's here. Yeah, it's right here. Everybody, be fantastic and visit La Quinta. <laughs>